Welcome back to Call for Help. I'm Leo Laporte. Can someone pry into your computer while you're online? Well, I'll tell you, uh, ever since those denial of the service attacks, uh, security concerns have become paramount. And of course, we're doing more and more of our personal business online. Privacy issues become a big deal. But how do you know what's a real threat? What's just hype? Joining us, Steve Gibson, the president and founder of Gibson Research Corporation, GRC.com, with some great ways to protect yourself from computer spies. Hi, Steve. Good to see you. Great to be back. Now, we got to tell everybody, Steve Gibson, uh, I, I first became aware of you years ago right. with Spinrite, which is was then and still is the best program ever made for checking and still testing going hard drives. Strong. Still doing it? Yeah. Yeah, but now, this is interesting because uh, you've kind of taken a little <laughs> bit of a turn here. Well, what's great about the GRC site is you've always covered stuff that's of, of interest to everybody. Uh, you had a, Because you're such a great programmer, you can whip these things out. You did a CAIH virus uh, we're recovery we're program. Last year, yep. That was great. I mean, there's lots of wonderful the stuff in here. Click of death stuff. Click of death stuff, that's right, with the zip drives. Yeah. So Shields Up is your latest. Tell me yeah. a little bit about Shields. First of all, how'd you get the idea for Shields Up? Well, I was uh, talking to some friends about security, and I realized that when when you're connected to the internet, the internet is connected to you. And people don't understand that when you go to a website, I mean, you're actually, your computer is connected to that server. Yeah, you think you're getting information from them, but they could be getting information from you. Well, that's what I've done, is the idea is I wanted people to understand what the vulnerabilities were in their, you know, in the normal configuration of their system, and to, un to, do, to show them exactly what it is that's going on and what information is leaking out. So I created a website that, like, builds a custom page. When you go there, it, like, typically greets you with your name. It well, says, Hi, hi, Leo. Or, or greetings, call for help. Right. How did you know my name? Well, you connected to my server, and right. I was able to, like, reverse probe your computer and show you what's leaking out of it. And then the rest of the site shows you what you can do to lock it down. This is stuff that any website can ask your computer, and in most cases, we'll, the computer will just give it. All right, now, we're not running any security software here, so we're just wide open. But this is how well, most people work, Most right? people, either a modem okay. or DSL or cable, well, that's exposed. Important. We always talk about DSL and cable like they're really the ones at risk, but it's not. No, because you can load some software into your computer without knowing it, which just waits for you to connect by modem. You know, right. I mean, the huge population of AOL, AOL users are just as much at risk, because if you get one of these bad programs in your system, it sits around waiting to phone home. Well, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Those are those, uh, the thing like Oriate and Godzilla and stuff. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's, uh, let's look a little bit at what Shields Up is telling me, and maybe you can interpret it for the layperson so they can understand a little bit about This is a great site, by the way, if you want to read about internet security. Well, You've got reams of material. Thank you. I, I, I don't want to panic people, though. I don't want okay. them to like, go all freak out and, right. and, and worry that someone is like a vulnerability that never existed before is now there. This has always been going on, but with the internet increasing in popularity and more and more people getting connected, right. it just seems like you know this is something people have to think about, is security is important. Right. Okay. And it's not like somebody's probably targeting you. I mean, this is not somebody's out to get you, right? I mean, uh, maybe a business would be targeted, like with these denial of service attacks right. we had a couple weeks ago. The typical user, though, can be found by a scan because they're just one IP address, sort of like one post office box right. out on the Internet. And so hackers do run sweeps across these... Looking these, for vulnerabilities. Looking for openings. And so the mm. idea is to close these openings. Don't make yourself a target, in other words. Right. right. Understand that you have a little bit of responsibility Responsibility, and you know, no one else is going to take you take care of you um, except you know yourself. Well, we're on the site right now. This is grc.com. Already, you know my internet address. Is that normally uh, public? Everybody knows that. Yes, and people should not be too concerned about that. Normally, it's in your email headers. If you post something to a news group, it's there. I mean, it's yeah. Te technically, it's the address of your computer, but there really isn't a practical way of hiding it. The, the, it's, the, it's part of being on the internet. You have to have it exposed in order for data to come back to you. What's this number here? Um, that's known as your MAC address. That's the serial number of your LAN adapter. Of my network card. Of your network card. Now, if I'm on a modem, I won't have one of those. In fact, it's all zero, so I don't even bother showing it to you. Okay. But the, the cool thing about, well, from, from the technology standpoint, is it's globally unique. Part The first half of it is a manufactured number. The second half is 
the serial number of that manufacturer. So there's no two of them that are the same, which means it uniquely identifies your machine. Well, now that's scary because any company that could get that information could, it's like the Pentium 3 ID. You, I have an it's ID. Like a, it's like a cookie on steroids. Because it can never go away. Well, and any website can access it. In fact, after I showed that this was here, tons of websites have come to me saying, hey, how can I get that? Because, you, you know, and they're <laughs> they all like, it. oh, well, we're not going to do anything wrong. Yeah, it's right, like, yeah, right, right. I don't all right, now I'm going to probe my ports. What is a port? <laughs> Why are you probing it? What does it mean when you do? Um, the, the way a computer hooks to the Internet is it's got an address, that IP address. Right. That's and like then your it, phone number, right? Exactly. Okay. But, or, or like, uh, th think, think of it like maybe your address at home. So it's the address okay. of the whole household. Yes. But then you've got people within the household. Okay. So ports, ports are like the individuals within the computer. Got they're it. The, they're like, like the, the different ways of accessing in or the if, into, you, if this were a phone number, these would be extensions. Yeah, and that's okay. a good example. Okay. So these are all ways that I can interact with the Internet. This is email. This is, wait a minute. Now, these are all closed, but this one's open. What yeah. is that? Now, that's port 139. A lot of people email me saying, my port 139 is open. Steve says so. Unfortunately, I showed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean, Steve? So I don't have to answer um, all those emails. It's because this is open that I was able to say, greetings call for help, or greetings okay. Leo, or something. Okay. That's the port through which this personal information is leaking out onto the Internet. Now, I don't have file sharing turned on. Don't have to. It's still open. It's still open. Okay. Um, however, there is a way, and my website goes on to explain, and, and you know, really in detail to show people just which buttons to push in order to close that down okay, yes, and then you'll come here. back and I'll just say greetings because I have no idea who you are now we have talked about and I know you talk about your website a personal firewall solution that's free called zone alarm right. it is free should everybody be running a firewall of some kind is that how important is that in the future it'll just be part of the system there okay. it is so important I mean it's like the wheels on the car you 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 know it's the computers have not been on the internet long enough to mature right. one of the ways they're still immature is they don't have a firewall but zone alarm is free so that should be an automatic thing get it all right it's at zonealarm.com. Zonelabs.com. Zonelabs. Actually, they bought zonealarm.com too now. Cool. So it's a oh, good. <laughs> makes it easy. <laughs> makes it easy for everybody. Now let me go back. I'm just. We're gonna. We're out of time. I just want to go back to Shields Up, which is, by the way, I know you put another T1 in for your appearance, but every time I show this on TV, <laughs> it goes down. Yep. It's. Uh, we're. We're a little, gonna be a little slow, but if I go back to Shields oh, Up it now, kind of worked with Zone Alarm uh, running, and I do the same thing, it's going to be. A different story. Isn't Close it? down. Yeah. Another. What, yeah. what, what will happen? Because I don't know if you we're can click get, there right now. This blank. This. Uh... Yeah. Go ahead and click right now, and it'll take you in. All right. We're trying to get through the server. I can't wait to go home now. How many now. people does it take to get this to happen? Uh, we saturate at twenty-eight thousand. So all of a sudden, is that what happened? I have twice that now. Fifty-six. Oh, it's because of you, Leo. Next time, <laughs> next time I show this software, we're going to say, please. Now, folks, don't try this at home <laughs> and, and, until we're we off the air. We can't get in. We can't get in. All right. Oh, it's uh, slowly going to do it. But hey, what's it going cool. to say, gonna say is... is <laughs> Just greetings. It's going it to say... It won't know anything about you. It doesn't know my name anymore. Right. right. It won't know about those ports. It won't know my internet address anymore. All nope. of that stuff because get, I'm running the... you got zone alarm running. The firewall running. And that's free. Now, there are other firewall programs out there. Yep. Um, and they're good. They're good. But this one's free. It's free. And actually... This thing does something that, as I think, it, well, first of all, it's unique. Right. It does it better than any others. Right. It blocks outbound communication. Right. Traditionally, the firewall is something that the corporation had, you know, in some closet somewhere. Right. And th that kept anything from coming in from the outside. The big problem for the individual is like a Trojan horse program. That's you know, sitting on my computer broadcasting out. In fact, here it is. Yahoo Messenger is trying to broadcast out. It's trying to access the Internet. And Zone Alarm caught it. It caught it. And now, uh, it turns out... I have Yahoo Messenger running and I want it running, but if it were doing that stealthily without my knowledge, well, this would be a very valuable thing to know. And exactly. It? And the idea is, I think that there's actually a bigger problem with applications you unwittingly load into your computer who want to phone home than it is with the random hacker, you know, somewhere on the planet. We're going to save that discussion for another time. I'll be I back. agree with you. Steve, you're the best. Keep up the great work. I am so glad we could get you on and bring your servers down again. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Gibson, GRC.com. Uh, if you want to know more about what he's talking about, there's a link right on the front there about the uh, Aureate issue, right? Right. A-U-R-E-A-T-E, -E, it describes it. And, of course, we have a whole bunch of stuff, including links to his site at our address.